again to another episode of The Wild Side. Uh, if you are like me from Wales, um, you'll know the names of the Manic Street Preachers, the Super Fury Animals, Catatonia, or Let For My Valentine. Um, if you've been alive sometime this century, you'll have heard of The Simpsons with the Yellow Album. Um, if you are anybody in the entire planet, you'll understand the, the Spice Girls, especially the wonderful, wonderful sporty Spice Mel C. Now, more recently, New Zealand, where um, this lovely gentleman and myself have um, relocated uh, separately, I hasten to add. Uh, uh, you look at bands like The Feelers, Kimbra, Op Shop, Goodnight Nurse, Devil Skin, Echo Park with my mate Nick on the drums, um, Supermodel, another mate, a bunch of friends of mine, The Chills even. Um, the pedigree for this gentleman is just be, uh, beyond, beyond question. Oh, I've just recalled he's, the man's even played drums for Tom Jones. Um, please, can you just say hello to uh, Greg Haver? Greg, thanks for joining me. Hello, sir. How are you? Very good, thanks. Very good. Now, um, it's, it's good to hear another Welsh accent. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can say exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely, yeah. wonderful, wonderful sing-song voices, and especially quite ironic in the industry that we both work in. Um, yeah, I, uh, weirdly, I don't have a great voice. So, although I did find out yesterday, um, I did one of those ancestry tests, and I was yeah. always worried because my dad is English, and I was like, "How Welsh am I?" And it turns out I'm forty-four percent Welsh. Of like so my heritage goes back like over well, over a thousand years of welsh heritage 44 percent. then my dad's size there's 27 percent irish so i'm pretty celtic i That's reckon quite, yeah, so, yeah yeah i was kind of worried that my sort of my welshness would be a bit low but i feel pretty good about it now nah, nah, <laughs> nah. um i was watching um i was watching a podcast yesterday even at a soccer one where there was um a guy i think his name was andy johnson um he used to play football for wales and uh he qualified um, and uh, Bobby Gould playing football for Wales because his grandmother was born in my stake by mistake. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, like I remember I, I just heard an interview with Julia Gillard, who was uh, Prime Minister of, of Australia, obviously, and she was born in Barry. That's right. So it's yeah. like, yeah, I mean, our Welsh traveling blood kind of uh, is kind of sort of seems to have ends, ends up everywhere, hence it, you and me. It does, being, yeah. We're, we're, a, bit being, more, being we're a bit more secretive about it than maybe the Irish, but um, yeah, we we do get around as well, don't we? <laughs> we do, we do. So, um, Greg, as, uh, I mean, you're a, you're a, you're a well-renowned producer. Now, um, what would be the kind of qualities that you, uh, you know, the qualifiers, I should say, that you look for somebody to choose to work with. I mean, some of the red flags for you regarding, you know, whether it's easy or a professional an act is going to be before you start working with them. Mm. I mean, really, I mean, my approach to how I choose artists has really changed in the, pretty much since I moved back to New Zealand, because obviously coming here and, and, you know, most of my work has been done in Europe, you know, yeah. although I did, I did expand on the idea of like micro careers over the years where I'd go to different territories and work for maybe a few months each year. And New mm -hmm. Zealand was one of those micro careers where I'd come here and work on a feeders record and not shop record. Um, so it was really much, so very much then I, you know, I'd be out there looking for work, sort of pitching for jobs. Um, I, my manager who was still is my manager, Stephen Budd, um, who I've been with since 2001, yeah. you know, he work comes to him occasionally, but really now when I moved here, I wanted to kind of do and get more involved in some sort of industry programs. And, you know, I set up quite a few things here, like the, um, the APRA song hubs program with them. And I do the amps program, which is an uplift for producers. And I, I run a grant scheme for NZNA. So I wasn't really coming here to look for lots of production work. I was coming here just for a change of lifestyle. And because I started production quite late, you know, when I was doing Manix mm -hmm. Records, I was in my late 30s and 40s. So it was like I wasn't starting as a young producer. Um, so, you know, I'm at a point in my career now where if an artist comes to me and I like them and I think they've got something interesting, I will tend to take it on because it's not really about how much money can I earn on the project. Yeah, um, It's more about, you know, especially with New Zealand artists, it, it tends to be, do I like them? Do we get on? Am I the right fit for them? Because there's lots of really good young producers working in New Zealand now. True, true, so yeah. it's, uh, it, yeah. So I rather than me take that work because I've had a really good career, um, it's kind of, you know, if someone really wants to work with me and we get on well, I'll tend to do it. So it's a, mm. so it's a really different approach to when I was out there pitching for jobs all the time and, you know, going like when I did Melanie's album, Mel, the Mel C record, you know, there were 17 of us pitching for that job. 
So, you know, you have to really do your prep and really sort of, um, you know, convince the management and the artists that you're the right person for it. Now I don't tend to do that. It's like, you know, I just, I, I don't go out and pitch people approach me and then we just, we talk about it. And if we feel like doing it, then we'll, we do it usually. So, awesome. so it's actually so- a lot easier than it used to be. It used to be a lot of gatekeepers <laughs> now. It's, hey, do you want to do it? Yeah. Okay. Let's have a coffee and, and catch up and talk about it. Do you, do you find the New Zealand industry is quite um, as it does in the wider industry, um, you know, from the administrative um, commercial side of it and things like that is, it's quite, um, it's quite fostering. Oh, very much so. It's like, there is so much support. I mean, mm. I couldn't have done things like the apps program and the, and, and the song hubs program without the support of like APRA recorded music, New Zealand, it ends at a near the music commission. There's so many bodies. Um, I've recently set in the last two years, set up um, the music producers guild with Chris Chetland over at COG. You know, we looked how to look after young producers and we're now part of the industry. And we, we, we do, we're, we, we're doing pilot schools programs. We're doing lots yeah. of, you know, it, there's a lot of support for young musicians here and young, and my goal is really to help build young producers and young art and young songwriters and, and, um, you know, put some, put some stuff back into the industry. Yeah. And, and, you know, you look at, um, art, you know, someone like Joel Little, who's just set up the, the big fan organization that that's there is a charitable trust is there to uplift young musicians. I think there, there's a real desire here to put back into the industry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that doesn't necessarily. I mean, to some degree, there was there was a, the, the, that happens in Wales as well. I think there's definitely a national psyche that kind of like, you know, I don't know if it's a guilt thing of being successful. You kind of want to help yeah. the next generation. Yeah. This is a really tough industry to it's break into, thing. and yeah, uh, yeah and, but there's a lot of support and and financial support here as well. Really, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, for a while there was that financial support in Wales. I I've not lived there for uh, for ten years now, so it's. It's hard to really know, but I, you know, back at the turn of the century, there's a lot of European structural money going to Wales, and that's how I ended up working with the Bullet for My Valentine guys. They were, mm-hmm. they had some European structural funds to go into the studio, and I and I, I was asked to take them into the studio and work on the stuff with them. So, you know, it was like, um, it, it's it's really good that this we're in an industry that kind of feels the need to support up and coming talent and up and coming artists and stuff. Yeah. Cool. Um, with regard to Bullet for My Valentine, I seem to recall that um, one of my nieces was actually, I think in school, was uh, the lead singer's girlfriend. All yeah. oh, right. <laughs> I mean, Wales yeah, is pretty yeah. small, uh, yeah. as is New Zealand. You know, you kind yeah, of like, yeah. you know, uh, the only d- problems we have in, in, in Wales, obviously, you know, everyone's called Jones and Evans and Williams. So it's really <laughs> hard to track anybody down. That's it's a right. It's a bit easier you know. here. It makes the rugby jerseys yeah. cheaper to print, you know? So uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so um, you mentioned a pr- uh, Producers, it was a producers guild, the music producers guild. Yeah, well, how, uh, how can uh, how can somebody get in touch, uh, get get hold of that and, and have a look for it? Is there is it a link? Yeah, yeah, just go to the to mpg.co, mpgnz.co.nz. There we go. So if you're and, an up and coming um, producer, two t- looking for it, yeah, yeah, there's two tiers for it. Um, a bit like the music producers guild in the UK, of which I'm still a member, there, yeah. which are, there's three tiers depending on how on your stature within the industry. Um, here we've got two tier system. Basically, there's a paid tier, which is hundred dollars a year, and um, but including that, you get you get like a, a couple of thousand dollars worth of free stuff. You get um, for free Serato software because we partner with them. We've got deals with some software companies, but also, which is the main thing, we did, we've done a lot of legal work for the producers, so they can they can have access to free contracts for the work they do, so they don't have to pay for the legal costs. So that it's that's for the tier one. The tier two is just be part of the network, you know, like a young producer might want to join that to, to touch. So they've got the support and advice from the, from the membership. And, um, and the tier one is with all the, with all the, um, the stuff that can benefit you it tends to be for producers who are, who are working at the moment within the industry. So um, yeah, it's, it's been, I've wanted to do it for a long time. And, and, um, and Chris Chetland is so well tapped into the industry here uh, that, you know, we, we partnered up and um, yeah, we set it up two years ago. So I'm really proud of it because it's, it's an area that was being neglected. And, you know, I did some research for the Music Commission a few years ago, looking at why Sweden is so successful as a, as a, as a net exporter of music. And and that's really down to the, the, the quality of the producers and the quality of the songwriters. So yes, it's, it's all those things to uplift that side of the industry here, really. So it's been it's been really fascinating because I, I was never an industry guy. I was always, you know, I'm foremost a music. I'm, I'm a drummer, essentially, yeah. who's done so, who, who fell into production, who then fell into working on it for industry bodies. It's like, yeah, it's kind of wasn't what I planned, but you know, I just want to be a drummer in a, in a famous band. You know, that's all I start. That's what I started doing. So, and that, and that's you know, that's how I started my career, playing drums for people, 
doing you know doing session work and yeah. and uh, and I've ended up doing being this kind of industry gray beard which is <laughs> wasn't, wasn't really the plan but I but I really enjoyed it it's very satisfying just making sure I've had a shave now yeah <laughs> Yeah, I've got this weird yeah. kind of moustache thing going. So I've got this Troy, got this Troy Kingy video because I've been working with Troy Kingy the last oh, few nice. years. Yeah, and I produced his new album and his eight the eight his eighties influenced album, um, and I've been playing playing for his band. I mean, the last time I played percussion for a band was with the Manix. That right. would have been that was I did their greatest hits tour two thousand two two thousand three. Yeah, um, and then and and then I kind of retired from playing live, and then Troy I played on Troy's. Uh, Freddie Caesar album and he said um can you come and play some shows I'm like you haven't played a gig I'm also like 20 years older than the next person in the band yeah. so it's um it's a weird one but it's been really good fun to be out and be a musician again and out, 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 get out and play and um but yeah that the last time was the last percussion show I did would have been Isle of Wight Festival with the Manchester Preachers <laughs> so awesome. yeah it's um that it's been quite a, that's been kind of fun the last few years brilliant stuff so um, per, on, a, on a personal professional level, as it were, are there any specific genres you prefer? What 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 do you like? What's your music? Depends how I feel at the time. It's like a few years ago, I really I think from playing with it with Troy, and I was also I also joined Gramsci with Paul McClaney. Um, Paul wanted to re to revamp Gramsci. And we've done a couple of albums in the last few years, and um. I had this desire to be a musician again after so many years of after the Manics, a lot obviously a lot of bands get in touch. It's like, well, if he did the Manics, he must be good with bands. I, that, in fact, that's, that's weirdly, that's how I ended up doing the Melanie C album because she had a live band and she wanted to use them on her album. And so when my management called and said, Do you want to do the record? I'm like, or do you want to pitch for the record? I'm like, well, that's a weird one. I'm not really a pop guy, you know. But um, mm. but she really wanted someone who could work with an ensemble of musicians, so that's how I ended up doing that doing that gig. So I've, it's been a lot of band work, but really the last few years I've wanted to be a musician again. I think some of that is just getting to you know getting to sixty, and you think there's only going to be a finite amount of years I can still play realistically. Mm-hmm. Drum drumming is a pretty sort of um, physical instrument to to work on. So so I tend to seek out a lot of singer songwriters now. So a lot of solo artists, and I've put a band together for their albums. Mm-hmm. um so that's been kind of the um that's what i've done mainly for the last few years but um but no i mean i you know in that time though i've done a devil skin record i've done a country record with miranda east and i've done all kinds of d- things in between so as long as it's a, a group of live musicians rather i'm not really big on sitting there with a computer you know i've done that before and i'm just like i like to have ensembles of people whether i'm in the band or whether it's you know it's, it's just groups of musicians are playing whether that's a metal band or a country country record yeah it doesn't really matter to me it's the the, the processes of production the same they're about getting the best out of the records you know the making it sound good sonically um getting the good performances out of everybody it's a lot, lot of motivational head stuff and um i also about 15 years ago i started moving away from engineering so i wasn't always behind the desk like the manix records i engineered all those records as well as, produ- as produced them Whereas now I tend to have an engineer and I produce from Clint? the back of the room. So Clint Murphy, I've worked with a lot. I mean, we, you know, he's done for the last, what well, really since the Feeders album in 2003, we've worked together on a lot of projects. In the last five or six years, when while I've been here, well, last, year, not, last nine years, while I've been here and Clint's been in the UK, we've worked on less records, although he still mixes a lot of albums for me. Yeah. And I've worked through a lot, a lot of young engineers with, with a lot of young engineers who Clint, Clint has trained. Or, or work with so they're like mini clints really so it's kind of like so you know nick portman scott seabright you know they're all amazing young engineers and um so although the, usually the projects end up with clint it's um they always start with me and someone else so yeah it's been i think that that not being in front of a set of speakers in close contact all day has helped me sustain a career for you know probably an extra 10 years because you know it's pretty it's pretty debilitating on your hearing to have high you know i like to monitor loud high volume situations for years so i've made lots of decisions that will kind of like try to extend my career because i enjoy the process i love making records i love being in the studios and even i like to think i've retired in you know up until august this year i i'd done nine albums in the space of a year i mean a lot of that was covid delayed stuff but you know nine albums five eps a lot of singles I remixed the chills brave words records yeah. and uh, played drums on a couple of records as well so that's hard. That's not really retiring. 
No, that's full time work. <laughs> I mean, at the moment, I, I'm having I'm having a nice break. I'm just you know hanging out at home and not. I've been back to Europe three times this year to work on records there, and nice. so it's it's. I'm kind of at that point. I just wanted to take a bit of a break from the studio. So, so it's been a crazy like since mid 2021. It's been pretty crazy. Cool. So okay then. So um, when um when you're getting back into the swing of it, um, how how would a a band uh, get um, Greg Haver. How would how you know how how are you approached for new work and you know what does somebody need to provide? How how do they do it? Well, in in New Zealand, it's just like, hey, bro, do you want to make my record? <laughs> it's pretty informal. It's yeah. you know, it's like I've got this, you know, get me a manager, so you know, I've got this artist, or it could be the artist just sends me a DM on Instagram or something. You know, yeah. it's like it's as simple as that. In Europe, it tends to be a bit more formalized. You know, I, um. Because they tend to be, you know, they tend to be more contractual work and stuff in those projects. So yeah. that often goes to my management in London. But still, you know, I still some of the bands I work with in Europe are like long term clients. Um, there's a, a band called Chinaski, who a, a Czech band. We've done three yeah, albums yeah. with now. Yeah. And we did. Um, we didn't. We just did an album in Norway in March, and I just went over to Prague for the launches. And you know, they, their management just they phone me up and say. Are you free? Do you want to do the record? So, so it's it tends to be because I'm not out there pitching for work. It tends to be yeah. really informal contact. So I'm not really I'm pretty approachable, and there's I'm really easy to find because there's not I many great havers as well. Yeah, on, 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 yeah. On, on on a on 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 the if you do a search, there's a the Polish football coach, and that's about it. And me, you know. <laughs> so um yeah, so I'm you know I'm really if people want to approach me and have a chat about it, I will I will um. You know, I'll always have a chat with them. Often, yeah. the thing that stops it is is budget. It's not not yeah. that I'm expensive. It's it's that I'm I don't want to compromise the record for the sake of the budget. There is there's there's a finite amount of money I need to deal with because I don't have a home studio. I like to go to studios to work, um, and you know, I, I just choose the studios depending on what the record is. Record is. So it's yeah. there are and, and also because I don't engineer anymore, I bring in an engineer. My my initial costs are a lot higher than a young producer would be sitting in front of a laptop. So that's usually the the main restriction to it. But then um, I mean, there's there's personal brand involved in that, then, isn't there? You know, I mean, you know, it's it's uh, there's an individualism when you when you are a producer when your name is Greg Haver. You know, you you can't you can't be seen to be compromising your work. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all about. Oh, this is going to sound really noble, and I don't, you know, it's for me. It's always been about the quality of the work. Yeah. You know, it's, what's the point in making records if all you're doing it for is the money? There are easier ways to earn money than yeah. being a music producer. So why not just, you know, because I, I, I obviously I was I, when I started there was a lot of money in the industry. We you know when I when I was a session drummer, you know, it's yeah. like let's go to the let's go to Montserrat in the Caribbean and record an album. You know, let's that you know it, 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 I was in a, a Welsh band called Waterfront, and they 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 signed this massive deal in the late eighties, and we, you know, we just we'd go all these amazing places to record, and we swan around America doing TV shows, and it's like yeah. there was so much money in the industry then, and then you could, I could interestingly working in New Zealand really helped me because the budgets were always smaller here um, than they were in Europe, so I got used to making records that sounded good on smaller budgets so so when the kind of when the crunch hit the european market yeah. as far as you know the, the the contraction of income from 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 cd sales um i was kind of ready for it and that really helped me in that fact i can i, I work really fast um i do a lot of pre-production i work fast so i can get through records and they don't cost a ton of money to make mainly because i don't agonize for a year and a half on it i go in like the, you know even the chanaski record which is a very well-funded album we did 12 song album in 12 days you know it's it's all about the prep. It's all about the organisation, yeah. you know, and just um and you know just and yeah yeah they're long days. You know, I'm not going to kid you. It's not nine to five. It's like ten a.m. till midnight probably. You know, but it's yeah. it's yeah. it's still we still get through a lot of work, and you can you can do it, and that you know do albums that I, I would call financially transparent. You're not you're not making excuses for the album because you haven't got enough money. So there is so that you know to go back to the original point, there is there is a there's a limit that I can I can go below. You know, if it's an amazing artist, you'll find a way to do it, or you, you can go out and you can crowdfund. There are other ways to yeah. do things now. And in New Zealand, there are there are grants to, there are grants you can you can apply for and things. So, you know, it is possible to do it. So you, but a part of a producer's job for me is to help the artist find the money. It's like you know, how can we do this? How, you know, how, what 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 ways can we do this to make this work? So you know, and, and give them if you give them help in that way, and you know, obviously you sort of 
you know, you can you have a bit more sort of uh, input into the whole situation and how you're going to do the record and how many songs you can do. And, you know, and, and artists tend to overreach. They always try to do too much, too much material rather than the best quality material. Yeah. So I'm always pressing artists to do less material, but really drill into it and make sure it's really good. So, but I mean, that comes with experience and every I've made every mistake in the music industry you can possibly make. So my job is to pass on those that information to artists so they don't make those mistakes. So you kind of know when um, the the uh, the infamous album fillers are being put out there. Yeah, yeah. Track <laughs> track four, side two. You know that those <laughs> ones. Yeah, that yeah. yeah the, the, you know, so, there's um, always, but, yep. but you also need to spot spot it when the band don't see it. I mean, the classic example for me would be One Day by Opshop. The band hated it. I really pushed for it. I really pushed for it. it Made, you know, it was a massive hit. Mm, it won the Silver hit. Scroll. It's you know, it's like, but you don't always get it right. I'm not going to say that happens to me all the time. But you know, sometimes you need that outside voice. That's what producers do. We're we're the independent voice. We're not in the band. We are there to give them a different perspective on the whole project. So, yeah. yeah. Thus, um, I think that was the famous saying by um, Matt Langer to Joe Elliott with that uh, with Def Leppard when they went in to do Pyromania. He said, um, "Don't fall in love with these because they're not going to sound a thing like you think." Yeah, yeah, and he, and and you know, obviously he's been he was proven right. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, I mean, I know Matt Lang. It's like it's just, I, the thought of just, you know, his classic thing is send me the songs and in six months send me the singer. You know, it's like I like I like being in the room with bands. I don't want to play all the songs, yeah. and play all the instruments on the record myself. I I like you know the the quirkiness and the and the sort of the things that. You know, especially with bands, because it's all about, you know, why is a band interesting? You know, why, why, are, you know, why is a band like Joy Division, who are not great musicians, yeah. so cool and so interesting? Why the Manic is another great example. It's like, you know, I mean, James is a phenomenal musician, um, you know, but, but, you know, Nick is, is a, a, actually a surprisingly good musician, but he's become that over the years. Yeah. But what he brings, you know, what him and Richie brought to the band was very much, it wouldn't be the band without them, you know, you know, all that, all the brain stuff that, that, you know, that comes from them. Yeah. So, you know, that I, I often used to chat with my friend, Kerry Collier, who I had a studio with in Cardiff. And, and he said, he said to me one day, he said, they're such a weird band. It's like, if they weren't kind of like from the same town or related, they would never be in a band together. Cause it's just, they even look weird because it's two short guys, one really tall guy, yeah. you know, it's like it just everything about them says it shouldn't work but it yeah. it works and it's worked for like 25 30 years so yeah, indeed, yeah. You, know, you just there's there's an amazing thing about about ensembles of people who just connect so yeah, yeah it's uh I, I don't and you can't you don't know why that is it's just it's just something that happens for breeds of osmosis really yeah yeah absolutely so um so you, you said you're having a little bit of a, a just having a little bit of a break at the moment do you have much in the pipeline for 2023 and beyond uh, I'm, I'm going to do some shows, um, do some gigs actually. Which is so weird for me to say because this is such, the, you know, this is not something I plan. So I've got all the Troy King summer festivals right. um, with his band, The Promises, um, which is the the eighties album that I produced with Troy. And so we're doing all those shows, you know, like sort of Splore, and uh, we're doing um, Byron Bay Blues Festival in Australia. Oh, yeah. We're doing we're doing uh, 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 we're doing some of the LAB shows. There's quite a lot of those coming up. And that takes me through to April. Then, I've, then I'm doing a tour with um, this Australian artist, Nathan Foley, who yes. I, whose album, who album I did last year. So I'm playing drummers on that one. So that's going to be interesting. So, so yeah, we did Nathan's. We started Nathan's album before COVID, and then we finished it during lock during lockdown. So we were all in Roundhead here, and he was over in in the old In Excess Studios, the Grove in in in, in Australia. So. Um, yeah, the, the the label approach said, you know, can you do you know any musicians for the tour? I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything in all in, in April. Why didn't I do it? And I could MD the tour as well. So that's going to be quite interesting <laughs> because it's like, yeah. So 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 try, so that kind of takes me through to April. Um, but you know, I'll I think I'll I'll get I'm getting to the point now where I probably feel like doing a couple of studio sessions. But um, who knows? Because I'm not out there pitching. I'm just I just mm. wait to see what people offer me and. You know, I never have problem finishing filling up my days. So, um, and so, yeah, so people would um, would people approach you just via the social media sites? Yeah, um, just, just yeah. Instagram yeah. me or, t or send me a message on Twitter if it, if it's still around in the next couple of weeks. Um, Who knows? <laughs> if, it, if, it, if, it, if it hasn't fallen over, um, 
Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it really is that. And just you know, it's because then the next conversation is usually send me a couple of songs. Let's have a listen to where everything is. Then it's usually let, let's get a like, grab a coffee, or if they're outside of Auckland, like a Zoom call or something. Yeah, uh, and then you know, and then and then then we can then at that point we usually discuss right. Well, what have we got available to do? What are our resources? How could we do it? Do we want to do it? I might say actually I, I'm probably not the right producer for this, but here's here's a here's four other producers who could be really good. Yeah. So I've, I, I don't mind I'm passing that work on to other people because sometimes you've just got to walk away from projects that aren't right for you. That you know, yeah. you, that's the beauty of at this stage in my career. I'm not like I've got to pay the mortgage. You know, it's like it's 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 you know, it can I can all the things you'd wanted to do when you were like 30. It's like you just take the jobs purely based on on how they sort of um, you know whether you think you're the right person for it. You know, I've taken on a lot of work over the years that I've not I've like probably shouldn't have done that one you know but you just take it on because it's a job uh, and, and i appreciate young producers are in that position so i i try to relish my lucky status that i can actually do this purely for the reasons we'd all really want to do it just could be like the music you know yeah indeed indeed well um and if, unless there's anything else that uh, occurs to you that you think you'd like to mention like um yeah i've got plenty that um that people would uh will will take from this and um right. yeah uh, anything else you'd like you you think that no, i should no, ask really. you or anything <laughs> no i know i mean you know we could talk all day about stuff and we haven't even touched on any, any sort of like welsh stuff you know <laughs> i mean it's been it's been i don't i don't know if you've been kind of following sort of these upsurge of like welsh music since yes. the like late 90s oh, it's exactly. been really fascinating to see because there was such a a kind of it wasn't it was never a barren period because the musicians were always there but it took like the manix to break through and and the, and the phonics and catatonia yeah. and all these bands to break through to really and it kind of cemented wales as a center of music you know and it's like it doesn't take much you know you yeah. look at the you look at the situation here with with, with lord it's like mm. you know and, you, and then you start to get you start to get um you know you, you get that sort of like, realization from other artists oh i could I, there's someone I know who's been successful. You know, I remember used to go to the City Arms in Cardiff on a, on a, on a Friday night, and like you'd look around, and like everyone was in a band with a record deal. It was just amazing, you know. Yeah. It was like, and there was so much sort of um, momentum that created that's still going through, you know. And uh, so it's been. It's, I try to keep a handle on it, but there's so many great, you know, great bands and stuff. But um, uh, but the and the I guess the one thing I, I I should probably mention this, but that was following on from the Welsh thing. It's quite interesting. Is I, I was in a band in Cardiff in like the late seventies, and we actually just did an we did an album earlier this year. Um, oh, wow. So we, our our single came out. It's a band called Retreat from Moscow. We're like a prog rock band, and we we were around. If you can imagine being a prog rock band in nineteen seventy nine. When it was all post punk, it was all yeah, like was all we were the, thing, we yeah. were these weird outliers with double neck guitars and mellotrons and stuff. And um, and we just stayed in touch over the years. And then um, sort of before I moved to New Zealand, we got together for some for, for some beers and to cat old you know, old mates catch up thing. I'm like, we should record some of the songs. So we haven't got any decent recordings of them. And we started recording every time I went back. Mm. And then we ended up with this like album of a lot of old songs, some new songs. And uh, we approached a label called Gravity Dream, who were like a quite a well-known prog label. And they were like, oh, can we put it out? I'm like, all right. We didn't really know what to do with it. And we ended up with like a really successful album within that sphere. And um, and we ended up doing it. We did a show uh, at, at Acapella Studios outside Cardiff um, in, um, in over the summer. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was, it was play, we hadn't played together for 41 years. You know, it's like... <laughs> It, yeah. it, it was it's been so it's been really interesting looking at sort of like bookending your career yeah, with the same yeah, musicians yeah. you know we were teenagers and the next gig we were, we're in our 60s you know so it's um, um so it's, it's that thing with like you know those musical relationships you build up they never really go away yeah and it's uh it's it, it's you know yeah. and i think it's it's been really encouraging the fact that i think i see music moving away from being just a young person's thing you know, it, music, music's for everybody. It doesn't matter what age you are. You know, the idea of heritage artists. And, you know, like the Manics are all in their 50s now, you know, and they're still out there touring, gigging, you know, just done this American tour with yeah, Suede. Right. It's like, it's like you know, you, you, you don't, you never really want to retire or give up. So we could probably have this conversation in another 20 years, you know. I might, yeah. I might not hear you very well, but I would be like, you know, I'd probably still be doing it. 
So it's uh, great, yeah, it's, 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 it, is, it is it is really fascinating, and it's, it's such an interesting career. I, I would recommend it to anybody, and uh, as long as they accept the fact it's going to be a, quite a tricky one, but you can, if you persevere, it is possible to do it for a career. And this is what I'm trying to do with the guild: is like um, convince young producers that yeah. it's not something you should give up at 25. You can you can do this, and you can get to my age and still be making records. You know, brilliant. brilliant. But I we but I could go on forever. <laughs> so uh, you know. Cool, cool. Well, uh, yeah, that's brilliant. I mean, that that's a fantastic message to end on. Is that look? Yep. Yeah, there's there's the there's the support out there. Um, there's the material out there, and there is the capacity out there to make a career of this, a lifelong career of this. Um, yeah, yeah. You no, know, you you got us too old. Well, she's here sitting here chatting away now, all the way around the other side of the world in New Zealand. Um, lifelong crazy. musician and producer. So how long have you? How long have you been here for? I've been in New Zealand um, over 25 years now. You can tell by my staunch Wellington accent, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I, mean, like, I, 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 I got together with my, my old label mates from, from the Booby Trap Records, like Hugh Stevens and, and Gary and John and Kerry Collier, and we got together over the, uh, in Cardiff uh, over the summer. and Because uh, the summer to me is still July, right? You know, yes. As I'm sure it is for you. Uh, and, uh, and it's like, you know, I, I, within like a half an hour, I'm proper welsh again you know That's it's right, like yeah, yeah. i don't yeah. know you're in the net whose coat is that jacket That's yeah. it, hanging on the floor where yeah. where, where to you from yeah That's yeah. it. yeah well, my, my, anyway, my wife I, I, says, I, yeah my wife says that is it what 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 do you mean by where to is it <laughs> yeah he says that yeah i've been i've been for i've, I've been for this it, it makes us charming jack it makes us it charming. does it does yes yes well look um yeah. i'm gonna wrap it up there and thank you so cool. much for your time that's really really much appreciated um no yeah, worries again, look the 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 whole point of wild side is um to show the other side of the music industry rather than just rather than just the bands although the word just is does not do justice to bands but um yeah. you know i speak to the producers, the uh, radio programmers, the managers, the event coordinators and things like that. So, um, yeah, this is designed to be educational for people coming into the industry or people developing their career. And, th yeah, this has been really good. So Great. many, many thanks. Uh, everybody, awesome. Greg Haber. Thank you, Jack.